train the muscles, not the joints. So welcome back to Natural Gland Bodybuilding and today I'm going to talk about whether you should shoulder press all the way up or whether you should do partial ranges. Now, I'm going to speak about two different scenarios and I'm talking about the standing overhead press because it has come to my attention the benefits of both and I have always known the benefits of both but I just want to make sure that you know the benefits of both because sometimes I don't speak about this. So a lot of times when you see me do overhead presses you'll see me doing a partial range where I am coming to my chin and then moving up to here and then coming back down again. Now the reason why I do this is because I'm trying to make sure that my front delt hits failure first and foremost not my neck or my traps or even my rotator cuff muscles. Now obviously you probably know what I'm going to say next. If you extend all the way up and then allow the shoulder girdle to come back now don't lock your elbows of course I never say that but you allow the shoulders to come back you will be working some of the rotator cuff muscles as well as the traps and for those of you who want to get more of that development it would be a valid technique for you to come all the way up in your shoulder presses. Now does that mean your delts or your front delts are going to hit failure as fast? Maybe, maybe not. Experiment with both ways and see but the reason why I don't extend all the way up is because I notice that my neck starts to get kinked and also starts to get fatigued long before my shoulders do. Now could this be because I have a dislocating shoulder and because of the instability of the shoulder the neck is trying to stabilize? Yes, absolutely. So if you have labral tears in your shoulder from some sort of football injury or whatever you will notice that by extending all the way up you may start to bring in more neck than the average person who has a labrum that's all you know healthy right that's that's all in one piece right so this is something that I noticed a long time ago and so I always adjusted my range of motion or my technique based on how my body was feeling and based on what I felt was hitting failure first and this is something that I think everybody should do because sometimes there are little idiosyncrasies that are going on in your body that you might not be aware of maybe you haven't done an MRI on that area or maybe you just have a certain muscle knot that is changing the function of your joints and muscles at the time that may be different next week but right now in this moment it's better for you to adopt a certain technique so this is why I believe in being in the moment with your training not just overlaying the technique that is supposed to work based on the latest encyclopedia sort of entry you've read or something on wikipedia or whatever right so so that's 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 what i mean if you do want to hit a little bit more rotator cuff and more trap then extend up above the head uh, just make sure that you don't come back too far obviously and keeping a slight arch or neutral position in the lower back is good. Sometimes people round their back when they do the shoulder press and if you have any sort of lower back issue that will irritate the lower back quite a bit. As much as some guys are saying squeeze the bum cheeks and then round under that's don't do that that's not just don't do it it's it's not good for the lower back. I've done extensive experiments with this a long time ago and, and trust me it doesn't work out so well so now really my point is is an exercise can work much differently depending on how you do it so a lot of times people are saying I got to do every exercise under the sun well you know you could do different variations of the same exercise and hit different parts hit different failure levels in different muscle groups and maybe if you want to make sure that those traps get a workout you extend all the way up and then when you want to make sure that your delts hit failure then you do a set or two of partial ranges in order to finish it off so there's lots of different ways you can play with this but yeah I've seen lots of bodybuilders over the years do this they'll do a certain exercise a certain way and then when they want to pump out some reps and hit failure in a certain muscle group they think is lagging behind then they'll do that at the end of their workout so you are like a fine painter with different paints try them out so I hope this helps you out in your training thanks a lot for watching if you need to get hold of me just go to naturalglandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patient supporters and take care for now mountain where did I put that guy totally off topic just asking for a friend uh, but how long do you think it takes for a body to decompose? It's, 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 a, fr a friend wants to know. It's not me, not me, but mountain. Mountain.